400,000 of our children between age one and six suffer from lead paint poisoning, according to the United States Public Health Service. Almost 90% of them were poisoned by eating paint chips or putty containing lead. Nearly two and one half million children live in old, dilapidated housing built before 1940. Even though many of these children do not appear ill, they still may have many types of physical and mental illnesses. Health care for lead poisoning victims costs $3 million each day. Care for one severely brain damaged child can cost a quarter million dollars over his lifetime. Two factors contribute greatly to the incidence of lead paint poisoning, dilapidated housing, and occupancy by children age six or less. In these old houses, toxic quantities of lead-based materials can still be found on walls, ceilings, and woodwork. Peeling surfaces make this lead accessible to children, especially infants. Children in lower socioeconomic areas often display a symptom known as pica, the desire to eat non-food items. Much of the housing in America's cities built before 1940 has become urban ghettos. These homes, now seriously deteriorated, are full of chipped, flaking plaster and peeling lead paint. To combat lead poisoning, the Department of Housing and Urban Development is trying to determine the nature and extent of the problem and develop methods for eliminating the hazard. The National Bureau of Standards, a part of the U.S. Department of Commerce, is providing technical assistance in this effort. Under federal guidance, some cities have lead poisoning control programs, which require deleading homes of children who have been diagnosed as having lead poisoning. Other housing in various stages of deterioration and known to contain lead paint are also being given attention under these programs. Many problems exist as the United States moves toward eliminating the danger of lead poisoning. Some are social, some economic, and some technological. The ability to define problem areas, detect lead and painted walls without destroying them, and diagnose the disease in children before it damages their brains and bodies must be achieved in order to overcome the lead poisoning problem. The National Bureau of Standards has developed a technology for non-destructive testing. This uses a portable X-ray fluorescence instrument to detect lead in paint on site. This instrument is non-destructive and gives an immediate indication of high lead concentrations. But there is a need for sensitive, non-destructive, portable equipment that can detect low levels of lead in paint. The Bureau is now working on the development of such a system. In choosing a method for eliminating the lead paint poisoning hazard, several other performance characteristics of a dwelling must be considered. These include hazard inaccessibility, a measure of the these include hazard inaccessibility, a measure of the protection of children at risk, ancillary work such as plumbing, electrical and heating, waste disposal, and the cost of labor, materials, and equipment. The National Bureau of Standards is working with the Director of Housing and Urban Development to analyze these characteristics and apply the results. Through the cooperative effort of federal, state, and local governments and private organizations, and the application of better technology, there is hope that this health problem will someday be conquered.